Hi, I'm Mark Brown. This is another Super Home 59 video, and this one's about transport. Now, this car looks like any other Toyota Ego. It's black, it's a 2009 plate, um, but it has been modified to run on auto gas as LPG, liquid petroleum gas. It's very hard to spot the modification, but I want to point it out to you. What we have here is a device to feed lubricant to the cylinders. What we have here is a lubricant tank. And then right down there, these two devices just beyond my fingernails are the actual injectors for the LPG. So here we are in the driver's seat. Everything here is basically bog standard Toyota Ego. The only thing that's slightly different is this small black box here. Let's have a look at that. On this device here, there's actually a push button here. That switches the LPG system on and off, but it will come on automatically. Now, because the gas is expanding, it's going to get very cold and the engine won't like a very cold start. So it's allowed to heat up on petrol. So yes, we have a petrol tank and an LPG fuel tank in the rear of the car. Right, when it kicks over from petrol to LPG, that light will go out and the red light here will go on and the green lights will show how full the tank is. Right. Let's set off and see how it goes. Right, there you go. <coughs> it's switched over. All the green lights come on initially. And the only indication that it came on was the click of the relay switched over in the engine compartment. Now the tank is full, so it's showing four greens. And after the system initializes, the small red light will go off. And now we're running on LPG. And you should notice absolutely nothing because it's exactly the same as petrol. We've been using LPG powered cars at Super Home 59 since 2005. This is our second. The reasons are that it saves CO2 about 16% over normal petrol. The simple chemical makeup of auto gas ensures that it is clean burning. The engine is quieter and lives for longer. Anyone who's seen an auto gas uh, fill up station at a petrol station would have noticed that it's half the price of petrol. Now, what we have here is a valve saver fluid, it's a valve lubricant. It's only required on the petrol engines converted to LPG to provide a bit of extra lubricant. And all I have to do once a month is just to check that the tank is full up. Well, that's over here. It doesn't, it doesn't use very much, so just a little drop. There you go. Today in 2015, I can fill up my tank at a local supermarket for around £13. Our LPG tank is in the spare wheel well. So, how do we fill it up? Now here's the regular petrol filler cap on a, a Toyota Ego. That's all completely as normal. You fill that up about once every four months. What's really interesting is what's down there. This is the filler cap for LPG. This is actually a protective cover. I can pull that off. It's held on. I can drop it there. What you have is a circular bayonet cap. As you can see, there's a screw inside, a thread, but that's nothing to do with it. What you can see behind are the two lugs for the bayonet cap. And when you fill it up, filling it at the LPG station, you use a bayonet capped um, connector that fits over this and then twists to lock. That produces a seal, opens the valve inside, and then you can then fill up with LPG. So what do we have underneath the car? If you look very closely, you can see the pipe that joins the filler cap on the right to the bottom of the donut pet, uh, LPG tank in the spare wheel well to the left. And you can see how it enters the car just here. And here's the pipe laying along here. There's also another pipe that you can see further over there and that goes to the engine. There's also a small electric wire there that actually goes to the filler gauge for the LPG. Well, the fuel tank is here in the boot. That donut section on my finger is showing you now is the fuel tank. It's obviously the size of a spare tyre 
and it's fitted into the spare tyre well. So what happens if you get a flat tyre? Well, something like this, a Holt tyre weld emergency get home kit will allow you to reinflate the tyre to get you to a garage. So what are the economics of a car like this? Well, I can get around 220 miles and fit it up for about £13. That's vastly less than most cars on the road today. Obviously there are lower emissions, there's a lower tax. I can also sure to find a £200 fully comprehensive. Probably the mileage running cost of this over its lifetime is about 6p a mile. So if you load this car with four people, you're going to get 23 grams of CO2 per kilometre per person. Now a full transatlantic cruise ship will yield 1,611 grams per kilometre per person. Short haul flying, 300. Long haul flying, 200. Motorbike, 100. Bus, 90. And rail, 60. So you could, in theory, argue that next to cycling and walking, this is probably the lowest form of carbon transport you can ride in today. However, that's simplistic. There's no such thing as an environmentally friendly car, and their days are numbered. Normally I finish all my videos by saying you can conquer your house, but today we're talking about conquering your car transport. Really we should be walking and taking more public transport. But if you're like me, you can't really do without a car, then this is the next best thing. A small, petrol driven car converted to auto gas or LPG. This has been a Super Home 59 video, an unusual one, hope you agree. Hope you learned something, thank you for joining us. Have a good day, and we'll see you next time for the next video. In the meantime, conquer your house and conquer your car. Oh,